So Nigel, there is a whole council um, approach to children and families, isn't there, in Warwickshire? Yeah, I, I think I've been really pleased lately about the support we've had about taking the, the child-friendly Warwickshire approach through council through our leadership team, the commitment from all of our members, from all of the different parts of the council, everybody has really got behind it. They, they want to look at, you know, right across the council, in every kind of different service, what does it mean to make it more child friendly? Yeah, and that, that's got to be really positive for me. Absolutely, I agree. And I think that everyone's really behind the strengths-based model across the organisation and across um, the police and health um, sector as well. And we really believe in um, relational practice and that re through those relationships, through those partnerships with families, with children, young people and with professionals, that that's what will make the difference um, to um, our vulnerable children and young people in Warwickshire. Yeah, I, I think it's really, um, it was really great when we started the work around restorative practice, and I, and I know, you know, we'll say a bit more about that, but um, the way it fitted together with the work we were doing in adults around strengths-based practice and how important relationships were there, and, and I think it felt like a real opportunity to join that up, to have a whole, a kind of, a whole directorate approach, I suppose. What I didn't see at the start was how much other services were going to get behind that, mm. and the way that, you know, different parts of the council wanted to talk about how they were strengths-based, how that could improve how things like supporting independence, helping people to help themselves were really important everywhere and, and not just in, in children and families or in adults. There's a real um, hunger for relational practice in, in Warwickshire. Our schools, um, our police, our health officers, school nurses, all of our professionals are really multidisciplinary approach, so that team approach and I think there's a, a real family um, team feel uh, to professionals that only by actually valuing everybody's skills, everybody's knowledge and bringing that together where we can make a, uh, a system that is really works for, for children um, and I think that you know, our, our relational approach is really um, embedded in terms of our, our adopting our, the Leeds family values approach so really valuing family and the strengths that they, they bring and making sure that families uh, are fully involved in decision making about their children and, and, and their, uh, their lives. When we started this work we were talking about this kind of as our new approach and this is the way we were going to work but actually lots of our workers at that time were saying to us actually you know this is just good social work this is how it should be and and how the system kind of nationally has moved away from that model and they felt really comfortable moving back to it that actually that focus on children that yeah. focus on supporting families was what they came in, into the profession to do uh, absolutely, I agree. And I think that um, we, we've really now, in the last um, 12 months, been really thinking about um, trauma-informed practice much more too. And actually, many of our schools, many of our um, social workers are already working around trauma-informed practice. But we've been able to really improve our approach to give them the tools and the, uh, to really uh, think about a trauma-informed approach. So how that fits together it, it, with our relational practice is that we really are making sure that we understand the trauma um, that children and young people and families have, have been through and we're really making sure that our social workers, family support workers and youth workers are equipped and supported to um, really uh, complete direct work with those families around this um, because we, we do believe that um, those relationships will um, absolutely repair um, the trauma that children and young people may have experienced. For me that, that's, that's absolutely key because you've got, we have a mantra about working with families rather than doing things to or for families and, and it's really hard to understand how you could do that if you don't understand the traumas that, that have happened within that family if you don't understand what what's created the situation that they're now in and I, I think this, this kind of work will really help with that. We've seen that through the pandemic as well and um, obviously the, the last 12 months has been really difficult time for all of us and we've had to rapidly rapidly adapt and change how we work with families haven't we? Yeah absolutely I mean I couldn't be prouder of the way that our staff have responded to uh, to the pandemic over the last year or, or so. Um, the fact that you know as you said, we moved from working from an office-based service to a home-based service overnight. Yeah. Um, but despite that, fa uh, social workers, family support workers continue to go out to support families, to work with support children, young people, to work with them in the communities throughout the pandemic. You know, we, 
we were able to, to put the, the kind of the technology in place to support them so that they could work easily from home, but also we were able you know, to, to access PPE and things so that they were able to go out and um, safely. And I think there has been a real focus on staff welfare during this period. Um, and, I, and I think that's really reflected in the feedback we've had from staff. Um, they feel that we've looked after them. Yeah, that, that, that's right. I mean, we've done um, several check-ins over the last 12 months and really wanted to make sure we're constantly um, checking in on our, on our, our practitioners and seeing how they're experiencing um, COVID-19. And everyone's had their unique experience to that. Um, but I think we've been able to go um, above and beyond using some of that information then that they've given us. So we've made sure that uh, we absolutely are using the PPE and protecting in our staff and that being uh, our number one priority um, and um, we, we've always had a really good um, offer around um, well-being our social mm -hmm. workers had well-being days um, and had get an extra day uh, of, of well-being and going forward um, we're offering that to all social workers family support workers and youth workers and, and team managers so really embedding across uh, uh, across the service that well-being um, and understanding that actually the, the job is difficult but it's really rewarding as well. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And we've seen some real innovation during that time as well. The way some of some of the support services around children and young people have moved to a, to a different offer, to a virtual offer, an online offer. Um, the way some of our you know, our workers, for example, our youth workers changed their role during the pandemic to support people, but also to kind of encourage them to, yeah. to do the right thing, if you like. Mm. And, and that you know, opportunity to really think about what will actually help at this time to make lives better for young people and actually they've just gone out and done those things and I suppose the thing for me is you know we really want to capture that stuff and to continue to do it and to use it moving forward. Yeah I agree I mean that creativity and really uh, getting people to come forward with ideas about actually how can we improve our service how do we learn from um, our experiences and there's many things that we've done over the last 12 months around that so and, and, and further so things like that you know online youth clubs um, mm. uh, connect with our young people through drop-ins went online um, and really making sure that um, we, we're really innovative and creative about how we engage with our, our young people and our families and stay connected with them um, I think there's been some really good um, uh, work around that but and it's been demanding it's been mm. difficult but we've really had the support of the whole council to make sure that we are able to increase the um, support to to social workers practitioners during that time uh, we've brought in extra resources to manage the demands from COVID-19 um, and we've really um, continuing to, to, to focus in a post um, pandemic world as you say into a more creative and agile environment going forward. Yeah and, and I think it's really you know we've learned some real lessons about communicating with our with our frontline staff during this time. Um, our, our, our staff are telling us that they feel more engaged that they feel we understand better what the, what their experiences are actually than we ever have have in the past. Um, they, they feel they understand how they fit into the council, what their role is, how, how the, the philosophies in children and families fit with the kind of those wider things, um, wider philosophies of the, of the whole council. So I think that, you know, there are some real lessons that we've learned around communication going forward and things we want to keep going so that they feel as engaged. And of course, they're telling us through the surveys that, that actually that is the case, that they feel that they know senior managers much better yeah. and we really want to keep that because that's really important, I think. I, I agree. I mean, I think your broadcast, my broadcasts have been really positive, uh, 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 having question and answers um, at, at live time with people. We've been able to actually connect with more of our staff um, um, through the, the, the medium of, uh, of, of the IT and, and conferences. And um, I guess in practice, we also have um, a time to talk sessions. So um, practitioners can book a time to talk directly with me about their experiences, an idea they've got, um, uh, something that they think we could do to improve um, their uh, their experience or our children and people's experience and people can see that we really respond to those things that we don't just um, listen and uh, uh, but we actually take some action and that they are shaping and designing our service yeah I, I think that's a really crucial bit isn't it that, that it's not just about talking to them more and hearing what they have to say it's actually doing something about it that's right. and I think there are lots of really good examples of that particularly around well-being um, 
one of the things that, that I thought has been really positive is the listening mates. Yeah. You know, something staff told us, some of them just needed someone to talk to, not their manager. And we've put in place a system that actually they are able to access that. They can just, you know, contact someone, have a chat about it, talk about their issues. Um, and, and that sits really closely with all the kind of more formal stuff. But actually, it was, it was a really direct response to what staff asked for. Yeah, definitely. And it fits so well with our, uh, with our relational practice, with trauma-informed practice, being a trauma-informed organisation, organi uh, being an organisation that really recognises the impact of the work that we do. And uh, through that, we've, you know, we've offered additional um, uh, counselling sessions to people, which people have really helped and, and engaged with. We've got a good uh, employment assistance um, service that's available for uh, not just our employees, but also their families as well, can access certain elements of, of support and advice, which is really positive. Positive. Um, and I think that you know, we're building upon on that going forward with our, our well-being days, with our uh, individual well-being uh, and development plans, um, really does uh, make people feel that they're supported and, and coached and, and mentored to, to develop their skills and their abilities. Yeah, and it's not just the, um, the pandemic response, if you like. The well-being was a real focus before this. And, and some of the things that, that used to happen um, or could happen then, like the running clubs at lunch, time and things, some of the sessions that, um, all kinds of interesting aerobic type of sessions yeah. and other things, Yoga and some and of the like teams, that. yeah, that were going on. Um, obviously, we, you know, those things will, will come back in as well as, as things then to make sure that our staff really do feel like they, they have the opportunity to well, for their well-being to really be protected and supported. Yeah, definitely. It's not just something we talk about, but we absolutely actively really uh, make sure they have opportunities to really make sure that they are looking after themselves and, 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 and that we're supporting them with that. Uh, and there's nothing more experienced than them and uh, our employees and their, their lives and, and getting that balance absolutely right. It shouldn't be just about a balance. It should be about that they experience work as a really supportive uh, place to be. Well-being is really important to our staff, John. We, we, we've kind of talked about that, but but so is career development, and uh, you know, it's been a real focus for us. I think over time to kind of. Um, provide the best offer we can for social workers, particularly coming into our service. Um, do you think we've got that to where we want to be? I think that um, you're right, we've got a real focus on being a learning organisation, that we're constantly thinking about our practitioners' uh, career development, and that is a real focus for us. Um, not only have we invested in our learning development um, programme, we've got a, uh, we'll be spending £2 million on, um, on, on, on our learning development programme for practitioners and managers um, over the, uh, the next three years, which is really positive. Um, we've developed our Warwickshire Children and Families Academy, um, which, isn't, which is uh, not just for um, uh, newly qualified social workers, it's for experienced social workers um, and it's um, for managers too. And, and we, really, we want to really focus around um, experienced social workers, supporting them um, to make sure that they develop too. And, and we do that in lots of ways. We've got um, really good links with our local universities. People can complete qualifications and we really make sure that we've got some really lean processes around that. So we make it straightforward and, and and simple for people but we also really value research and um, really want to make sure that um, practitioners have opportunities to research and, and, and become specialists in some areas if, they, if they've got that particular interest. Um, I think that uh, our investment in coaching and mentoring is really important too so uh, of course you know it goes without saying supervision we want that to be reflective, regular, re uh, relational that's really vital um, but we also want want to make sure that um, our, our learning development opportunities really do grow people and it's easy for people to move around the organisation. I think that's really important. I, th I think there's something about them. Um it's, it's kind of easier in a way to, to focus on the first year or two of practice as people come in but actually what we hear quite often is you know how people want to develop how they want to grow how they want to become better practitioners and that never stops through their career um, and often they find you know th that there aren't the opportunities I think we have got those opportunities now for them I think we can provide those and, and then for those who want to progress in their career you know I, I'm, I'm a real advocate of, of a kind of grow your own approach I, I nothing kind of makes me prouder than when we appoint people from within and and, and you could talk right across the scale of you know our, our 
care experienced apprentices, um, those apprentices becoming uh, full-time staff and joining us, uh, family support workers being supported to become social workers, and then some of the management development processes so that our social workers can move through our system and reach our senior management posts. Yeah. Like you did, John. Yeah, like I did as well. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I, I think you're right. I mean, I think that, you know, I, I think there's lots of people, uh, me included, who have really good examples of that. You know, we've got some really good um, opportunities with uh, practice education. We do value that. Um, so we, we try to, to look about having 25% uh, of our workforce is newly qualified. So the rest of our workforce, we're really wanting them to be experienced and we want to give them an opportunity to grow um, and develop. We've got bursaries available for people. So that might be that actually people are interested in doing a particular course or a particular area uh, uh, that they want to develop in and we'll support them with that. Um, we've got our social work apprenticeships, we've got young people apprenticeships, mm -hmm. and we've now got our youth worker apprenticeships too, which is really positive. Yeah, and it's really great to have that mix, we want that mix of experienced social workers, but also that they come from different routes. So some of them join us as experienced social workers, bring the skills, bring the experiences that they've developed elsewhere and others grow and develop those experiences within the county and kind of we get a perfect kind of blend if you like in that way. Uh, I agree and I think we've got a re we are building a really diverse community in Warwickshire diverse to represent our, our, our population our children and families that we work with and, and I think also really been able to, uh, to make sure that we grow our own that we absolutely uh, respect and reward loyalty um, to families and that relationship approach it comes back to our practice approach about relationships and really um, getting to know people and supporting people on their journey. Uh, and I think that we also want to make sure that it's easy for people to come to Warwickshire and apply. So uh, we've invested in uh, recruitment officers. We've got um, when people apply, they'll be able to apply through a CV approach. They'll be able to, they'll be given a direct contact for someone to speak to. And we want to make that process as simple and straightforward um, as possible for candidates candidates rather than um, just for the local authority. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we're really welcoming when, when people get here. You know, they, they really talk about how you know, friendly and positive it is joining Warwickshire. And we want to make the process before they get here as easy and as friendly as that, if we possibly can. Definitely. And I think there's a real commitment and, and, and um, from across all levels of our organisation, I think, with that, getting to know people when they start, um, making sure that we really, um, you know, we have good good links with us in you know, our service managers our operations managers are in the teams are, are available have got that communication um, that we're you know there is that family um, feeling that actually we are in this together and we are um, we, we know that the job is is difficult and those first few years are really difficult and tough um, and, and coming through um, being a social worker developing um, your skills but there is such a vast amount of support that is available within your team and then external to that um, from our uh, um, our principal practitioners from our academy to really grow and develop and if people decide actually I want to get an experience um, in a different area uh, uh, then we make it simple and straightforward for them to move around um, and go and get different experiences um, so that they get a really diverse experience here in Warwickshire. Yeah, I, I think that, that's so important, the, the, the opportunity to not do the same thing, but not need to go somewhere else to do something different. I, I suppose we should say that you know this, this, this is a really big investment in, in kind of learning and development, but that's not the only big investment in children and families. You know, we, as a council, we're putting you know, over 20 million pounds over the, kind of the next four years into, um, into children and families and improving our services, offering more, helping to develop our staff. Some of that money is coming from, from the Department for Education who are working with us. Obviously we're working really closely with, with Leeds City Council and outstanding um, authority to help to, um, to support us in that, in that kind of program. What, what are the things that you think that's really bringing for us, that, that investment? I think that um, uh, the, 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 uh, change is, uh, is sometimes a word that puts fear in, in practitioners, but actually this change is, uh, and this investment has been really led by by, um, by practitioners, by first line managers. So we've got a number of things that, we've, uh, that we're developing. So we've got a new um, approach in terms of domestic abuse. We've got a new caring dad service. So really valuing um, dads and fathers
fathers. We, we know that we don't always um, utilize the strength of our fathers, and, and that's so important for many of our children and young people. Um, we've, got, we've invested and doubled our, uh, our, our capacity in family uh, group conferencing and, and uh, mediation, which I think is really important, which again reinforces that we want to support families to be fully involved in the decision making um, for children. And I think uh, one of our uh, um, biggest investments is around uh, multidisciplinary teams. So in the north of our county, we will have domestic abuse workers, mental health workers, substance misuse workers, really making sure that um, children, young people, and their parents get the best opportunities to, to be supported, to, to grow, develop, change as well. Uh, it, that, that's so important for our families, but it's also really important for our workers, isn't it? That actually, they, they know however great social workers they are, whatever great work they do with families, they need other services to work with them, they need the support, they need that understanding and that, that help from mental health specialists, from drug and alcohol specialists, who can really kind of wrap around the family, but also can wrap around the work, give them the advice that they want, the guidance they want, the support that they want, to enable them to kind of do the best job that they can do. Absolutely, you know, I think that you know that, that our, our social workers and youth workers, family support workers, are really shaping this change. They're telling us actually they would benefit um, from having um, those multidisciplinary relationships, and so we're making those investments to make that happen. Um, John, we, 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 we've obviously worked really hard and we've talked a lot about, about safe and manageable caseloads over the last period. Even during the pandemic, we, we moved heaven and earth really to keep caseloads to the levels that they were prior to that. Why do you think that's so important to our social workers and, and our other um, workers? Yeah, I mean, we've, we have absolutely uh, focused on, on our caseloads and we continue to do that. We did that before the pandemic, certainly through it and, and, and in that post-pandemic world we're now entering into. And our, our, our average caseloads are 15 to 16 we want our caseloads to be as low as we possibly can get them and that's so that um, our social workers youth workers and, and family support work, workers can really spend good quality time with children and families we want them to uh, be out in the community out in the family home uh, out with children and young people and, and really connecting with them and uh, and through that um, they will then be able to support those families um, to make the changes that, that are necessary uh, and I think that our, our caseloads uh, are really supported, our workloads are really, uh, really supported by a really active uh, investment in our family support workers and youth workers. Our strengthening families model, um, which in, in particularly in children in need, has worked incredibly well, where our social workers and family support workers work together with a family. And we want to really progress that and, and, and strengthen that and, it, and, and grow that further across the service. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I mean, when our focus so much is on is on relationships and how we build a relationship with a family that does take time it does need you do need the opportunity to spend that that you know really valuable time with the family and, and keeping caseloads as low as we can really does support that doesn't it absolutely it does and our, and our social workers tell us that they understand that we absolutely do focus on caseloads that they um, they feel supported around that and that we make sure that um, they have got the right level of support around them to meet with some you know, very complex issues um, still, some very complex situations, um, but they, they feel supported by their first line managers, by the, 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 uh, the multidisciplinary um, um, practitioners around them to make sure that they're not in it alone, that they have got that community around um, young, them, themselves and the families that they're supporting. So what would you say, Nigel, to people thinking about coming to Warwickshire? Well, I, I think firstly I'd say that Warwickshire is, is a great place to work for all our staff. Um, I, I think it, it's a place where we try to make it easy for our staff to, to be the best that we can, they can be. Um, that we really want to make it easy for people to do a good job. Um, and we want them to be able to work in the, in the way that really helps them to do that. I think there's a, a really big commitment across the council to our residents and within that very specifically to our children and young people. Um, we've really invested in those services. We've really kind of tried to make it a place where anyone 
would feel that they, they could really help to support children and families. So there's, there's nothing stopping people going a really long way here in Warwickshire and there's such a diverse amount of opportunity uh, across the organisation within and within children and families. I think it's, um, it's not just about um, segmenting people into one role, really thinking about actually that career development um, and the long term um, support for people so they can do the very best jobs to support children and young people. I absolutely agree. I, I think we're building something really great in Warwickshire, something really powerful and I think it will really give people the opportunity to make a difference here.